That's the David. Guys, the David is huge. Though, did you know there's actually three Davids in Florence? Let me know which one you guys think is the real one. Now, there's plenty of other sculptures in the academia, but walking in, you already get a feel that David is the main character. You know, waking up this early works up an appetite. I appreciate art, but I also appreciate a cappuccino with croissants. And guys, look, the trifecta. Only in Florence can you get a cappuccino, alcohol, and bubble tea all at the same shop. The details of the cathedral are even better in the daytime, but geez, look at that huge lineup. Speaking of big lineups, you guys must have heard of Al Antico Vinayo for good Italian sandwiches. The lines there are crazy long, but come with me, I'll show you guys another sandwich store called Pino Sandwiches that's just as good with less people. Ugh, guys, I'm standing here and I can already smell the mozzarella and the meatballs. So I got the first one with parma ham, buffalo mozzarella, fresh tomatoes, and pesto. The second one had roast beef, spinach, peppers, eggplants, hot sauce, and smoked cheese. So good. So everyone's just lining up for that uh, sandwich that we just ate. Good thing we came early. I'm done with the one or two hour lines. And now we're going through the Christmas market. I love going through these. The first one I saw was back in Lisbon. And um, yeah, they just brought back really great memories. And of course, coming here, I'd always have to get the hot chocolate. The layers of chocolate on it is extra thick. Now the day's not over yet. Florence is known for its leather stores. And today I'm taking you guys to the school of leather making opened since the 1930s as a way to teach orphans of war a practical trade skill to earn a living. We're now here and we get to shop at these handmade leather goods. Dang, look at the celebs that shopped here. Neil Patrick Harris, definitely legendary. Uh, you got Bob Sch Rob Schneider, no, Bob Schneider, Rob Schneider, and you got Robert Downey Jr. It was amazing just seeing the final products of the jackets and the clothing that they could make with leather. Here's one of the leathersmiths, uh, hard at work, resizing the belt I bought and putting my initials as engravings for free. It's just so cool watching them work. And there you have it, that's my Florence leather haul. Now, stroll back to Piazza della Signoria to see the statues that are put out on public display. And hold up, David number two? Is this the real David? The Uffizi Gallery is next on my itinerary. But guys, I was so tired from staring at art. I sat on the bench for half an hour resting my eyes and legs. But I'll show you guys my favorite works of art from there. The River Arno is so calm and peaceful. If I had my standalone paddleboard, I could totally paddle on this. And now the most well-known site in uh, Florence, Ponte Vecchio. If you want a piece of gold jewelry as a souvenir, Ponte Vecchio and its vendors has got you covered. Fortunately, I don't have that much spending money, but I do want to bring you guys to the most well-known pharmacy in Florence. The pharmacy is Santa Maria Novella. Since the year 1221, they began making fragrances, and this place smelled amazing. And with the wood furniture carvings, they looked incredible. They even had a showroom sprayed with their newest rose fragrance um, for you to walk through. I bought way too many bottles of cologne to take home. You guys know our rose smells. Oh. Everything here is just so beautifully wrapped for a souvenir gift. Whoa, whoa hold up. Seeing clear reminds me of home. Even in Italy, I'm not far from home. After all that walking, it's time to have dinner! Or should I say make dinner? I signed up for some pasta making lessons in the hopes that I could replicate it and make a delicious dish at home. We'll see how that goes. The head chef here was actually pretty nice. He had unlimited bottles of wine and juice for everybody uh, while we learned how to make four different types of pasta shapes. And if you've ever seen drunk people making pasta, it's not very good, so good thing the chef had made his own supply of pasta to feed us after we created our little monstrosities. And here's me and my mom proudly showing off the pasta we made. <laughs> and guys, there you have it. It's 10 p.m. perfect Italian time dinner. We ate spicy gnocchi, Tuscan ragu, capello pasta with butter, and dill cream pasta sauce. My favorite was the Tuscan ragu and I was even able to replicate it at home over Christmas. <laughs>